Hi, it's Jill with QuickFlex. We're going to change all of the colors on these divas because I want them in black and white or zebra print dresses and red accents. First thing I'm going to do is I'm going to trace the images. And let's see here. Then I am going to go ahead and do my trace image instead of detach because I want it to cut out between the arms and everything. Then I'm going to box it all in, go to object, modify, and crop. Come on. There we go. Now I have them all. Now you'll notice that the this one here, well her pony, pony, ponytail came disconnected, but none of that's going to matter for what I'm going to do. See how these purses are connected? First thing I'm going to show you is I want to disconnect these images so they're all individual. So I'm going to zoom in real close and it's real blurry, but that's okay because I'm not going to be using these. These are just kind of a template for me. I'm going to go and first thing I'm going to do is remove, whoops, I didn't mean to do that. I'm just going to remove her fingers altogether because I rebuilt her fingers on, on my <clears throat> image. I rebuilt them. So I don't care if the fingers are on there. Come on. I'm waiting for it to detach. Say, there we go. Now I'm going to turn my knife off and there she's detached. Now I want these purses and I want them all different colors. So what I'm going to do is over here on the left, I'm going to take this, this um, looks like a couple triangles attached here. And I am going to copy and follow my line here on one purse. And I'm just going a straight shot. Now, there we go. There's one of them. And now I want this shaded on the end of the, per the bag here. So I'm going to go back to that same, that same triangle looking thing. And now what I'm going to do is make another piece that's, whoops, I didn't need to do that, and turn that off. And there I have. Now I'm going to make this. I want to make this piece. I'm going to make it white. I want to make it red and white. Because these are going to be, all my pieces are going to be black. Zebra print on the dresses. And then the bags are going to be done in, in reds, prints or whatever. You'll see because I've already got them done. I'll go ahead and do this one more time. This triangular looking thing here double looks like an egg timer or something. That piece will draw straight lines. Oh, how did that go? How did that happen? That was weird. And I can't see the back of the bag, but I'm assuming it's about it. And then I'm going to take that image again, start up here in the corner, go down, across, and up. This is not a knife. And it did it wrong that time. I didn't go down far enough here. I don't know what happened. There. And there. This isn't a knife, so it isn't cutting anything out. Okay, guys, I'm back. I don't know what's going on. I don't know if anybody works on a Mac and uses the magic mouse. I've been researching it online, trying to find out if you can get a, a virus on a magic mouse because my mouse does whatever it wants to do now. And that first portion of the what that I was taping, um, it was my mouse was going nuts on me. Anyway, I'm not going to redo that part, but I'm going to show you how I changed the color of the dress. On this particular one, I'm going to go into the knife and I have it on a curve. And first thing I'm going to do is I got to cut up here because I want to remove that portion. And then I'm going to go around and cut that off. Cut her head off. Off with her head. And then I'm going to take the head and I'm going to color it in black because it's all blurry. It's not a good crisp cut. Now I'm going to take and cut this part off that's in the yellow.
And this is going to be the same concept for all of them. Then I'm going to take that portion and I'm going to color it red. This just so you can see it real good. Now I'm going to take and cut this off on a curve. I'm going to take and cut the bag loose from her hand. Um, I've already redone these again. I, I, this is all repeti repetition for me. I've already got them done. And I'm going to cut the bag off of over here. This bag on a curve. And then I'm going to cut off the bottom of her dress. I didn't cut that real straight, but that's okay. And then I'm going to cut her boots. And the other boot. Now I'm through cutting the pieces up. And I'm going to color this. Oh, she's got the bag still attached, I think. I think. Nope, I didn't cut all the way through over here. So I'm going to go back up here and cut through again. I had a little bit connected there. So I still do. What did I, why is it dis, not disconnecting? Let me see. Close up and, oh, I see where it is. I would not do this if I was, if I hadn't, if I was making these for real, I would not have it chopped up like that. I would go back and start over again. I would undo what I had done. And there we go. And this is still connected, which I thought was disconnected. And, oh, there goes my mouse again. I hate to go out and buy a new one. Boy, I tell you. Okay, I'm going to just show you. Because see, these are not crisp. They're, so I recolored the arm and the bags, recolored everything. Then I did this one in my zebra, which I'm not going to look up my zebra print. Well, maybe I can do it here. Let's see if I can find it right here. Where eh, I'm just going to do this one. Well, that didn't work. There we go. Whatever. And then I'm going to color this in black. And I'm going to cover color her boots in red. Now what I did as I colored these on the images that I actually um, have all completed, I duplicated, for example, duplicated one like this, and then after I cut up the dress and cut up, cut off each of the piece, I would lay it on top um, and line them up so that I could group them all into one. And for cutting out, Instead of moving it like this, I would have just pieced it on top of an original copy. I mean the original piece, because I got it all off here. There we go, and then this arm goes in here. And then I would group them all after they're done, and then I would do my outline. And on these, especially, they need to have an offset because the legs are really, really skinny. And if you don't have an offset on them, they are going to be very hard to put together. Um, then I just grouped it together, and I'll show you how much of an offset I have so you can see. There we go. This arm isn't colored because I didn't cut the purses off. But look at the difference in the crisp, crispness of the colors. Here are my pieces done, right here. And all of these images are 18 feet tall. I cut off all the bags and colored them the way I wanted them, put the zebra print dresses on them. Now, I've already got the video done of me putting them together in the pictures. So I <laughs> did it out of order. I did that first and came back to this to show you how. Um, it does take practice. This is something that I've been doing for quite a while. And like, for instance, this, this going around her arm here, it doesn't go around her arm. I built these bands and, and I put this belt in here and there's little things that I did to change it. 
But anyway, I will upload now with the video with the finish. Look at the difference though in the color. Big, big, big difference. And they're all separated now. And this is the one that is actually her. If I flip it and put her on top, bring it to the front, and it's not going to the front, send it to the back, and it's, yeah, there we go. And I set it on top. Well, it's not the same size because this one's a little bit bigger. But um, if I shrink this up and curve it around, well, I know how I did it over them, but I might have put the bags on a little bit different. I'm not sure. Doesn't matter. Doesn't matter. At least you get the idea of how they're done. So I hope that helps, and now you're going to watch them get put together, and I just lost my silhouette. Oh, man. Okay. Come on. Trying to quit my quick time player and it isn't working. Okay, we're going to try again. Quit. Stop recording. There we go. Hi, it's Jill with Crickflix. And I'm finishing up some Divas in zebra print with red accents. There's some centerpieces here. And let me see here. I've got most of them put together, but I'm going to... These images, I'm going to do a real, I, mean, I haven't done it yet, but it'll be at the beginning of the video, kind of showing you how I colored these and made them how I needed them. This is some stuck all over it. There we go. Got it. They're all 18 inches tall, and they were, they're just black silhouettes with clothes and accents on them. When they're this, when they... There's so many here. I think I've got way too many. I was supposed to have 10 total, but it looks like I got about 15. Um, when they're really tall and skinny like this, it's a little bit harder to to um, put your sticks in there without them showing. Let me find, and I thought I had a stick cut up here, and I didn't. Let me grab one real quick. A rod, and I have a feeling I'm going to need a couple more skewers. I use the the shish kebab skewers when I have real thin areas that I'm working with. Um, I still have to use the same peg size because the my bases and stuff. My husband, if I had to, if I had him start drilling them all different <laughs> sizes because I started using different size of pegs. Um, I'm afraid he would quit on me. So I use the same size. And I use the thin popsicle sticks to, to get in the legs. But down here where it's really, really narrow, I can't really get in there with the popsicle stick without it really showing. So I'm going to do it with the real thin skewer wood barbecue because they're a lot thinner they're they're thinner than my my pegs my doll rods and i am stumbling again it's getting really really super close to my vacation time and i am busier than a cranberry merchant on thanksgiving day so i just called my husband Poor man. I went to see my mother again last night with my son and his wife, and this wasn't the drawer I needed. Duh. Um, and I, I called my husband because I had totally forgot that I was supposed to go, and I was over at my daughter's, and my son calls, and he's over at my house, and he's calling me, and he goes, where are you? And I tell him I'm at my daughter's, and he goes, well, uh, when are you going to be home? And I figured he wanted to talk to me like a serious, he sounds so serious, and I said, okay, well, what for? And he said, because we're waiting here for you, Jenna and him and Langdon. And I said, for what? Again, still thinking that I had done something. And he said, going down to Grandma's. I did not remember. And the worst part was, is I hadn't called her 
and to see if she was even home because I totally, I spaced out. I didn't realize I was going anywhere. But um, I decided I better not rock the boat. And if they're there and they're all ready to go, I'm going to just go. And so we got heading on the highway, just about an hour drive from here. And um, I kept calling and she wasn't answering. And I was telling my son, well, if she's not home, um, we're going to have, we're going to eat out anyway in, in my hometown. And I knew her caretaker arrived at 5 o'clock. And I told my son, I said, I guarantee you she's out in the yard, putzing around in the yard. And I said, the caretaker comes at 5, so I'm just going to keep calling. Because I know eventually she'll answer the phone and she doesn't, she can't drive anymore. She's 89 years old and my son took her car, or my son, not my son, my brother, took her car keys away. He's the one that kind of is available and lives closest to make sure that she's all okay. And so I knew she'd be home. So when I got... I, called her right as I'm getting off the I No, I didn't even get a hold of her. She never answered the phone. I'm losing it. Can't even remember what I did. She never answered the phone. But when we got there, I saw the caretaker's um, car in the driveway. So I said, she's there. And went in and, and she was, uh, to say the least, she was thrilled that she didn't care if she wasn't ready. But um, So we took her out to eat. And I don't know where I was headed with this when I was telling you my story. Oh, that I have all this work to do, and I cannot seem to remember from one day to the next what all I have to do. Like my mother says, I have way too many uh, things on my plate. But I don't know who to throw off my plate first. My kids all tell me I have too much on my plate, and I ask them, okay, which, which of you would like to be the first one to be removed from my things to do? And no one has stepped up to bat to um, go first. So until somebody does something or leaves me, I don't know. I just, I, oh, I tell everybody, the older I get, the busier I get. And retirement is not, I do not call my life retired. I'm not at all busier than I've ever been. But it was really nice. I went down, saw my mother, and she was thrilled. And I'm going to have to do that a couple more times before I leave for Disney. And plus, I have so much work to do. So anybody that is thinking of contacting me to give you a heads up, my lead times are four weeks out right now. And come Oct uh, the first week of October, I will no longer be accepting orders for a few weeks or anything that will be due before mid-November and, and that's all going to depend on what it is my shop will be on vacation which means I will be on vacation a long overdue vacation so a bunch of things came in requests came in today so I had to go out and buy an agenda so I could try and figure out what I was going to have time for and what I couldn't do. And I sent some links out. And if they watch my videos, <clears throat> it's going to be first come, first serve. And there will, be, will be a cutoff because I can only do so much. So um, sometimes people ask for things. And so I send them the link. And they don't plan on purchasing until a couple weeks away and unfortunately I had to change it on my policies that once I send out a custom order link I have to have that checked out and paid for within 24 hours or I remove it and fill that spot with somebody else because I just I'm getting too much at once and I have to have the ability to schedule it out and have time to do it so this was one that came in two days ago that I've got to ship tomorrow and it's for ten of these but I accepted it and <laughs> after I accepted it I got bombarded but that's okay that's okay business is good that's it's just that with vacation coming I've got to be very very careful I don't overdo it 
I love these though. These are so cute. And I am going to show, again, you will see that part before you see this part, so I don't need to tell you. I didn't do them in the correct order because I haven't done the screen recording yet. And each one of these is going to have an accent of red or white on it. And I am going to use the boas. That this is actually... Ooh, I know how I'm going to do this one. I know how I'm going to do that. I'm going to do that one like... Yep, 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 yep. That's what I'm going to do. I'm going to do it like a collar on the dress. Oh, I love these. This is actually garland from Christmas time. And I buy it, I get it when it, when the Christmas stuff comes out. I go ahead and pick up this stuff all. I mean, you would not believe how many things I get at the end of the season after Christmas. Because it's all marked down. Anything that doesn't sell is marked down to just pennies. And I buy it all and use it, but not for Christmas. The whole problem is, is a lot of times I forget what all I have. I get so much of it. Scissors, here we go. And I thought fall was here, so I did the whole switch change of all my clothes um, and set apart my clothes for Disney because, of course, it's going to be warm there and then got all my winter stuff out because it just all of a sudden got cold. Well, I swear it's 90 degrees out today and I had a long sleeve shirt on and long pants and... Sitting in my office here, I finally had to break down and go dig out a shirt because I was sweating bullets. Oh, these are so cute. These, I'm putting on whatever, I'm putting them on white bases. However, they are going to be on black bases per her request. So, um, I don't have any painted, so I took call my husband at work and told him Tonight when he gets home, he's got to paint black bases because all I've got are white. And she's shedding. Her boa is shedding. Shedding. I said it right. Okay. On this one, I put a little bit of uh, tulle at the bottom of her dress. And on this one, I put a white boa. She had a red scarf on, and then I put a white boa with it just to give it some oomph. Okay, let me grab another one, and this one is another one with that boa. You know what? I can put these together and come back and show you the X. Well, you know what? I'll put these aside and grab these that are already glued together and show you how I'm going to accent them. If I know, I don't know if I know how I'm going to accent them. I just want to add a little red. Let me see a little red glitter band at the bottom of the dress. What do I think? Oh, like a great big belt. That's what I'm going to do. I'm going to have her a red belt. On. Then, I know, I'm going to see if I have a metal piece of accents to put it like a buckle on the belt. If I don't, I will come up with something else. Oh, I love doing these things. I love doing this. I just thought I'd share that with you. Oh, I love doing that. There, I put a big wide glitter belt on that one and let me see. I guarantee you that I have a metal something to put on that. Oh, let me grab all of these and see what I've got. Got a lot. Let me see what would go really nicely on that. I know what I'm thinking and I don't know where I have it. Oh, you know what would be cute too? Uh -huh, uh -huh. Here's a little buckle I can put on there. Oh, love it. 
I'm telling you guys, you would not believe when you get jewelry, costume jewelry, and it breaks or whatever, and you get a whole bunch of spare parts. There's actually a brand name that's called Spare Parts. You don't throw them away. They make great accent pieces. Um, and you might not think you'll ever use them. Then all of a sudden, like me, you come up with something that they would work perfect. And there I've got a little metal belt buckle on her little dress or her belt. Belt dress, whatever. And there we go. And let me move that over a little tiny bit. Probably can't do it now because the blue dried. There we go. And what I'm going to do on this package is I am going to put a ribbon on it. On the package, not on the doll. Or not, on, not on the girl. I'm going to put a bow on it. And on the gift box, I'm going to put a little bow. And there we go on that one. And they're outlined in glitter, like the little um, arm band on her little bag. And this little bag is all done in glitter. And on um, this one, I think what I'm going to do is take some black glitter and draw the ribbon on the box because this would be wrapped. Whoops. And I just did this one wrong. You know why? Because that would not go down that way. But I just fixed it. I think I just fixed it. Okay, now, when crafting, I tell everyone, keep wipes handy. Was that right? The rabbit one run there and then one run that way. Yes, that was right in the first place. Just looked wrong. That was right. I just wiped it off and it was right. Wow, guys. I really am going out of my mind. Okay, I'm going to have to wait for that to dry before I can do the other side. There's a little bit of glitter around her shoes as well. Um, there are actually five different images, so I will take a picture of all five. And I'm going to go and do the video of the how I did these. These are really cute. So... I will get this uploaded, and I'm not going to be doing any scrapbooking pages right now because I have a ton of orders that I need to get done. So you're gonna, if you're gonna visit with me, you're gonna watch me make things um, other than scrapbook pages. So I'll be back. Bye bye.